Davy Skills back again with another track guide for the Skip Barber series on iRacing. This week we're at the daddy of them all, it's the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Strap yourself in because you're in for a long and bumpy ride. Quickly, the track conditions from the practice session, not ideal for hot lapping. So as you can see the time isn't ideal but I am a little bit ahead of everyone else in the lobby so that makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Then on to the setups in both Imperial and Metric. Let's jump right into this baby. So here we are. We chuck it around the last turn and start our journey now. Into the first turn, nice and easy here. Use the pit wall as our braking point. I will mention now that I'm going to tell you all to brake smoothly about a hundred times around this track. So if anyone is ever stuck for a drinking game, I got you covered. So we brake smoothly into turn one, down to second gear and really try to late apex this one. There's a lot of camber and elevation change which you can try to abuse. Be careful not to hit the curve on the inside. Then we're onto this lovely sweeping section, flat out through here, shifting to fifth gear shortly after the right. Then it's eyes forward, looking for our next braking point. I like to use the lovely graffiti that's scattered all over the track surface. So after this chunk has passed us by, that's when I start to brake. Braking smoothly down to fourth gear initially, then trail braking through the left hander, quick blip of the throttle, and then pump the brakes again. That will set us up nicely for the right hander. We aim to get as close to the curb on the inside without touching it. Unfortunately, I've already failed to listen to my own advice. Not good. Moving on to the next series of corners, we have a left-right-left combination. The first left is flat out. Then for the right hander, you're going to want to attack the curb on the inside whilst lifting off the throttle slightly to regulate your speed and keep the car stable. Then as soon as you've come off the curb on the right hander, begin to flick the car to the left and dab the brakes. Then we have another right-left combination. Brake smoothly after the graffiti. Aim to take some curb on the inside and get back on the power smoothly, but most importantly, as early as possible as you're going to carry the speed all the way to the top of the hill. Then it's up through the gears into fourth. Over this little crest, we're going to look to shift into fifth gear, and then we line up on the left hand side as we go up this hill. In and early, and keep it nice and smooth. The back end may want to step out on you here, so just be prepared to catch it. We're going to stick to the left hand side of the track on the way down this little hill. It's just going to save a couple of hundredths here and there. And then we drift on over to the right hand side of the track to get ready for this high speed corner. As is normal for the skip barber, you're going to turn in early. And then as you approach the crest, you're going to lift off the throttle and just regulate that. Keep the car nice and steady, nice and smooth as the car is going to go light. You just want to keep the car nice and balanced. As soon as the car becomes settled again, go full power, try to get the car over to the left hand side of the track to get ready for this very tricky downhill right. I use where the track surface changes colour as my braking marker. This is quite early, so again I brake smoothly and drop it down to third gear. You can carry more speed into this turn than you might think. Unfortunately for me on this lap, the car gets away from me and I end up missing my apex. But I do still manage to get on the power quite early considering this. This is very, very important as we carry the speed all the way to the bottom of the hill, which then throws us right into a very difficult series of corners. I use this sign here as an indicator to turn in and cover the brake. This works very well and helps me navigate this blind corner. As soon as you're past the kerb on the inside, you can begin to think about putting more power down. Only for a second though, as you're immediately into the braking zone of the right hander, brake smoothly at the graffiti, down to third gear and aim to keep the car tight on the inside, using the power to help guide your car through the turn, then straight into a long, late apexing left hander, using the graffiti once again, braking smoothly once again, you're going to trail brake down to second gear, avoiding the kerbs here is a must, as soon as you see the exit open up for you, go back on the power, you want to get your car as far to the left hand side of the track as you can before turning into the final corner of this section just a slight lift is enough to see you through this turn again avoiding the curbs on the inside is key here now we're heading down to this double left hander the first one is nice and easy just a little lift to get us through then immediately thinking about braking for the second left i use the dirt on the edge of the track as a guide it's not very accurate and i suppose it's more of a timing thing the best advice i can give is to keep it smooth drop the car down to third gear and aim to apex as late as possible without touching the curbs Then briefly up to fourth gear down this hill, using the tyre mark as our braking point, turn in and then begin to brake. Again, it's all about keeping it smooth and apexing late. It's up to fourth gear, flat out through this left right and then line up for the very long right hander. 
The disappearing kerb on the left of the track can be used as your signal to turn in and cover the brake slightly. Your aim is to regulate your speed through the first half of this turn, so again, being smooth is the key. Once you're about halfway through, feed the power back in. On exit, line up on the left hand side of the track and look for your next braking point. The best I can come up with is the shadow on the grass here. Obviously, it's not always going to be there, but it's all I've got. Our aim here is to almost forget about the right hander and think of this braking point as the braking point for the tight left. Now that I've confused you with my thought process, brake smoothly, drop it down to third for the right, trail braking it as long as possible. Once you pass the right hander, back on the brakes and down to first. Because this corner is cambered, you can get on the power early and it's up through the gears. Approaching this next section in fourth gear, look to use the end of the kerb as your braking point braking in a straight line initially, drop it down to third gear, then bleed off the brakes and turn in, avoiding the kerb on the inside and getting back on the power early. Then for the right hander, we can use the end of the kerb again as our braking point, however this time we're going to turn in at the same time. This means we aren't going to brake as hard, so it's just a slight dab on the brake followed by a small coast, then back on the power very early. Now we can have a small brake on this straight, just enough time for us to contemplate and psych ourselves out for the upcoming turn, which is very tricky. So let's try and get this right. I like to use this Yokohama sign as a braking marker. It may seem a little early, but once you've passed the sign, begin to brake smoothly, drop it down to third and look for that late apex. As soon as you're in third gear, you should be looking to get back on the power. It seems a little strange, but there is a massive straight up ahead. So we need all the speed we can get here. Once again, avoid the kerbs on the inside. Nice and easy to straight, just take the line of least resistance and watch your speed disappear. Whilst this is happening, you might want to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, as I'm sure you don't want to miss out on top quality content like this. There's nothing quite like watching a Skippy lose power up a hill. With that being said, we actually have a turn up ahead where we need to do something. Using all the track that you can, turn in and drop it down to fourth gear. Then smoothly does it on exit and try to keep whatever speed you have. Flat out through this right hander, then we're finally into a braking zone. As you can see, the kerb bulges out here. This is a universal braking point for any car it seems around this track. You want to brake here and drop it down to second gear. You'll end up taking quite a shallow line into this turn, which means you'll want to brake deeper into the turn than you normally would. Then it's back on the power and let your car drift to the outside of the track. This is it. Possibly the most famous corner in all of motorsport. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, the carousel. Very easy to get wrong, but not all that difficult when you get it right. As for the braking point, I like to use the kerb on the right. Just before it ends, brake smoothly and drop it down to third gear. Trail brake a fair bit into the banking. Then if you've got it right, the car will settle and you can go full power simple. Unfortunately for me, on this lap there was a car up ahead that didn't quite get it right, so I had to lift. Once the carousel is over and done with, we begin our journey into the back section of the track. There is so much time to be gained here, it's unbelievable, so hopefully there are some top tips for you ahead. Just a little lift will see you through this left hander, same for the right. Then at the top of the hill, I like to use the kerb on the outside to widen the corner entry. Not a lot of people do this, but I guess I'm just a little crazy. As you get to the top of the crest, cover the brake, turn in and downshift to third. The trick to this turn is the early apex. It allows you to get back on the power very early. Then we're up to fourth gear and onto a right, left, right. The best tip I can think of for these corners is to take the two right handers flat and the left is to steady your car. So here we go, flat through the right, little brake and lift for the left, then back on the power and over the kerb for the right. The corners are coming thick and fast now, immediately into the braking for the next turn. Use the kerb as a marker, drop it down to third and keep the power applied to stable the car. This is another corner where turning in early will help you out a lot. At the top of the crest you shift to fourth, then using the graffiti to find my bearings I brake and downshift for the left hander. Similarly to the corner before, you want to keep it as tight as you can so you can line yourself up for the next turn. Flick the car to the right, downshift and cover the brake as this kerbing vanishes. Then use the throttle to balance the car before going full power. You can use a lot of the runoff on corner exit. Once again, at the end of the kerb, flick the car in, downshift and brake. Again, using the throttle to control the car. If you're brave, you can use the kerb on exit too. The next corner, exactly the same. This time we brake where the graffiti is. But it's the same flick, brake, downshift motion as the previous two turns. Nice and easy.
We're gaining speed, getting ready for the jump. As you land, cover the brake and downshift the force. Keep the power on slightly and turn in. As this is a double apex, you'll want to get as close to the kerb as you can on the inside. If you get this right, you can go full power and then navigate your way through this flat out section. Now we have two tricky corners. I like to break very early for both of them. The good old graffiti is what I use for the right, breaking smoothly, drop it down to fourth and then get on the power early. You can carry a lot of speed through here and it's immediately into the left hander. Breaking early and smoothly, drop to third and watch out for the inside kerb. Liberal use of the throttle will gain you tenths here. Now to the mini carousel, not as big but just as tricky as its big brother. Brake after the graffiti, downshift to third and turn in gently. The aim is to get the car as low as possible in the carousel. Once your car's dropped in, full power, it's that easy. Now we've got two flat out rights. Very important to keep your steering smooth and steady here as any time lost through understeer will be magnified as we head up another monster straight. Now we're on the straight, it's time to have a sip of water, keep yourself hydrated and psych yourself up for the last series of corners. Do not choke the braking point. These graffiti artists are being super helpful here. Brake smoothly after the graffiti and drop the car down to fourth. You want to try and get your car as close to the wall on the left. Then once you pass the wall, it's time for the real braking down to second gear. You can use the kerb on the inside if you want. As you can see, I mess up the corner and take way too much kerb, so definitely don't do that. Then it's a small left that can be taken flat out, hence the final turn. As for a braking point, the grass changes to tarmac on the left, that's where I brake. No downshift, just brake and turn. I aim for the wall and just hope I've understeered wide here to be honest with you. It sounds daft, but it does seem to work. Then we cross the line. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please do hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you guys next week.